Hey, what's up, North County? We are back with the What's Up North County locker room, and we are in Atascadero talking to new head coach, Dan Loney. Hey, coach, how's it going? Good. I'm excited for football, are you? Oh, man, it's been a long time. Right? Waiting for it. You know, as soon as the season ends, you just, you're ready to start again. So you took over the reins here in Atascadero. Tell me about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, man, it's it's been kind of a whirlwind. Um, you know, it's, it's just been exciting. It's, uh, it's just been busy. You know, it's been a long time since I've been a head coach since Templeton and just kind of getting back in that saddle and, and all the administrative stuff that I forgot I had to do <laughs> all, right. all popped back up. So, but it's been, it's been fun. Yeah. Um, is, uh, is Coach Cooper still kind of like swaying in the, in the winds there, kind of peeking his head in the windows and stuff? No, he's, uh, he's actually been kind of, we called it the summer of Coop. So he took a couple vacations, he backed away. Um, he's just, I think he's just, he doesn't want to be uh, that guy that's kind of... Retires, so retires. He doesn't want to be the Tom Brady? Yeah, I, I, I think he's a little worried about, you know, uh, maybe stepping on my toes on some things. And, and so uh, he's really kind of backed away and just kind of let me go with it. Um, but I still like talking with him and, and asking advice and, you know, getting his take on things. Uh, I, I hope, you know, this doesn't last too long and, and he wants to get back into it. Well, once you get into your blood, as you know, you know, it's it's still there moving. You're trying to, you know, it's like, okay, I'm going to take a break, but I mean, it's still there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he You can see it. He, he popped his head in. I, you know, he loves, loves the program. He loves football. Uh, you know, him and his family have been such a huge cornerstone of this program. Um, Forever? Yeah. 20, what, 28, 30, 30 years? Yeah. You know, it, it, I mean, it's just, it, it feels weird not having him, having him there. So, you know, I'm looking forward to when he gets that itch to come back. So what did, uh, so what did summer look like for you? Man, it, it was, it was good. It was fun. We, uh, you know, we, we tried to install some stuff. We, we ended up, uh, you know, we started way back in spring. Uh, you know, kind of slowly installing our, our offense and our defense and, and hitting seven on sevens during the summer, uh, hitting the weight room uh, as much as we could and, and you know, just kind of trying to instill some toughness and, and, uh, and making sure the kids are ready to go now. And I mean, I'm, we're sitting here in the weight room. I mean, this is, this weight room is built for strength. You know, which is what Tascadero has always been known for, is that strength. You know, the old, you know, Larry Welsh days, you know, just in the gym, in the gym, in the gym. And, I mean, these racks, you've got, what, three, six, nine, twelve. 12. Yeah. I mean, you've got, this is, this gym is meant for power. Yeah, no, I, I mean, that that's uh, kind of been our cornerstone, like you said, for, for years. And, and we're going to keep that rolling. Um, you know, kids, you know, we it's, you know, one of the things I think, uh, really helps a program just not physically but mentally um, when a kid can have success in here it can lead into onto the field so um. yeah and you got uh so i think you know you guys had a great season you guys well you guys had the last two seasons have been phenomenal okay so you got you know state champions the year before last year you know cif and i i, I don't I think there's some unfinished business, you know what I'm saying, for you guys, you know, especially the way the last year ended. I think it was, I, I don't know what happened, but um, it, it just, it just, it was kind of like that watching a movie and then all of a sudden the, the, you're, it's like, well, where's the conclusion, you know, because you didn't feel that coming, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, it, you know, de definitely. It was one of those things where, you know, we went through the regular season and, you know, we had our ups and downs and, and didn't play as well in some games, but we always felt like we could always pull it out and and you know we ended up getting that buy in that first round of CIF and and hit Washington Union which Templeton played and and uh, we thought we had them dialed and you know things just didn't go our way a couple guys got hurt and uh, we just didn't execute like we thought we should and there was always that feeling like hey we're gonna come back and we just never had that opportunity so um, was it was there some stuff that you could that you learned from that game yeah, definitely. I, I think, uh, you know, really stepping away and, and taking a look at that, that we really, when we lost a kid or two, we felt like we didn't have the next kid prepared as mm -hmm. well as we should. So that was one of our main focuses this off season and this summer and during this fall camp was making sure that our ones and twos and even our threes, when they jump in, 
that at least mentally they should be prepared to jump in and, and get going. So, what? Uh, how many kids did you guys graduate last year? Oh man, uh, the exact number, quite a few. Yeah. I, I don't know the exact number, but I know. You get graduated cooks. Yeah, yeah we, right? cooks. We lost cooks at quarterback. Uh, three starting, three-year offensive linemen. Um, wow. With uh, Cooper, um, we had. Uh, Oh man, I'm blanking, but we lost three three offensive linemen who also played both ways. Um, lost three receiving receivers as well, especially with you know big hitters like Degnan. Mm -hmm. And so and and all those guys were two way guys. So you had them all on the offensive side, and then you had them on the defensive side. So instead of losing six guys, you're actually losing right. twelve. And so it's it's been a big hit. So um, but kids have stepped up this year. Um, we got more one way player kids than we, we haven't had in a long time, so we're looking that hopefully that uh, we can sustain uh, and stay away from injuries and, and have more longevity longer into the season. Who, um, who stepped in to fill those, uh, those shoes at the quarterback this year? Uh, so, uh -oh. uh, there you go. Uh, so uh, we had a good quarterback battle uh, between uh, two kids of uh, Diona and Trejo. And, uh, Trejo ended up uh, being being the guy that stepped up. He's a sophomore, so he oh, was a wow. freshman last year. So we have a young guy, and then uh, Guyona uh, ended up becoming one of our receivers. So it just kind of worked out that that ended up being our best eleven on offense of, of that kind of configuration. Uh, and so we still have Guyona's going to be jumping in at quarterback every once in a while and kind of quote unquote wildcat packages. But um, you know, we just he's a great athlete. And so, but I think he serves us better in that receiver, receiver position. Very cool. And Mikey, he's just a tough son of a gun. He's a wrestler, he's a football kid, he's a track kid. He's just kind of one of those old school backyard kids. He's not super tall, but he just makes things happen. And kids really rallied around him this summer. Do you, um, I, I know you coach also wrestling, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you feel that wrestling, because Tascadero has a wrestling program, Paso has a wrestling program, Templeton does not have a wrestling program. Do you feel that the wrestling program helps football players also on the field? Oh, for sure. You, I mean, you know, we have all these names up on the on the boards here, and you look at the years that we were good at football and wrestling, we had a huge crossover. Mm -hmm. And you look at the years that we struggled, and there was a lot of kids that did not wrestle. And I think wrestling, not just, you know, just the sport, but just the mental toughness that you have to be as a wrestler. Right, individual battles. That yeah. You know, even though you're playing with 11 men, you know, your partners, you're still in an individual battle. Yeah, and, and it's, it's a tough sport. It, it, I mean, I'm a football guy, but if you can survive a wrestling season, you can survive anything. And right. Yeah, it's just, you know, mental toughness. Along with that, it's just everything that goes along with wrestling. Takedowns is like tackling. Um, head up, head up, yeah. Pushing in with your hips. Yeah, so it, it, I mean, it, everything just translates so much, and you, you know, there's stories, you know, hundreds of stories that you look at, big time college players, NFL players, and and even though they weren't wrestler first guys, they realized like how important wrestling was to them uh, and their success on the football field. So mm -hmm. it's just, it, I, our big push this year. And, and the next couple of years is trying to get that relationship back with football and wrestling. For some reason, it's it kind of disappeared over the last 10, 15 years. And so we're trying to bring that back together. Well, being that you're the head coach here in football, and are you the uh, head coach with wrestling? I am the head coach in wrestling, yeah. So you're like, hey, uh, <laughs> Jimmy, you're coming uh, to wrestling after football's over here. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, that that's what we're trying to get. We're trying to get some of those young linemen in, in that you know, the, the, the two uh, positions in, in football is the O-line, D-line, that translates the best in wrestling and, and linebackers. Hmm. And so those, those positions are where we're trying to recruit kids. Like, hey, come on over, let's try wrestling. Very and cool. Yeah, so we're, we're, trying, to, we're trying to promote those, those together. Awesome. So, so, Dan, we got Friday night lights starting tonight. So <clears throat> you guys didn't have a game last week like uh, the other two North County teams. Yeah, yeah, we ended up taking that as our bye, just it, the way it worked out with the scheduling. 
Um, it actually kind of worked out well with us because we're fairly young, uh, inexperienced team, even though we have quite a few seniors. Uh, not a lot of them got playing time last year because we had so many seniors last year. Um, so it was nice to have the scrimmage against Napomo, see where our strengths and our weaknesses were, and then having that extra week to kind of work on those. Are you excited? I am excited. You, I mean, butterflies, nervous, I mean, everything. what kind of emotions are going through your head right now? You know, a lot, and, and a lot of it is just, you know, have we, have I, have we done a good job preparing the team? There's so many different scenarios that happen in a football game, and, and you know, you, you try to cover them all, and you just hope that you prepare them well enough that in a game situation that they're not thinking about it, that it just turns into reaction and them having fun and them just playing as hard as they can without having to think too much. Because now everything rests on your shoulders this year. So, yeah. So that's the other thing, taking over the head coach, all the blame, all the success, everything rests on your shoulders. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and I, I don't take that lightly and, and that's, you know, one of the things that you know, I didn't sleep very much last night because you start you start going over like a checklist. Okay, what did we talk about? Did we go over this enough? Do the kids understand this? And and so it, it's just one of those things that comes with the head coaching position. And and but I look forward to it. So so obviously had a successful high school career, college career, went into uh, pro football with the SaberCats. Do you still get those butterflies when the national anthem kicks off when you're standing on the football field? Oh man, it's it's great. It, I love it. It 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 brings back really it brings back all those memories, all the good memories of of sitting there with your buddies. Um, you know, all those hard times, all the bad times, all the good times, and and you know sometimes it brings a little tear to your eye because it's 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 a little different because my middle son now it's his senior year and I you know it's one of those things where you're just like man. I hope he's having a good time. Like you're looking forward to him hopefully having a successful season with his buddies and and he's enjoying it as much as I did. Because there's a lot of memories that, I mean, uh, when you leave, graduate, you move on, life starts, you can always go back. Like when you see your buddies that you haven't seen in years, I mean, it's like you didn't even miss a beat. You didn't even miss any time. You can reflect back on today's first game jitters or something that happens in the bus or you know going down south that you know winning the championships I mean just like it was yesterday oh man I mean you know it's funny you mention that because just this this summer this last uh, spring and summer it was my 20 year and I guess they call it anniversary from graduating from Cal Poly with guys so during their spring game they had the 1999 uh, season come you know players come down and and watch the uh, watched the spring spring game and it, you know we got together guys and just like you said it was like we had never never left it, you know I haven't seen those guys since we left Cal Poly some of them and it was like we saw each other on the field gave each other big hugs and then it just the story started coming and it's awesome yeah it, it was it just had never left and it was the same thing uh, we had a Sabercat kind of get together that summer as well and it was the same thing we met up and you know it was like we'd never never lost touch and Very so cool. it, it's a it's a cool uh, you know gathering and, and connection that you make with guys during sports for a lifetime yeah it is so Dan what are you expecting for tonight what's uh what, what's your game plan tonight I mean obviously you have some film that you watched on them who, who are you playing tonight we're playing North Bakersfield okay so North Bakersfield I mean pretty much all the Bakersfield teams are usually pretty tough yeah, I mean, and, and North is no different. They're tough. They're they're in the same kind of position we are. They have a brand new head coach. Their head coach from last year uh, took a job at Liberty High School in Bakersfield, okay. and so uh, this guy came in and, and took over. So he changed the offense a little bit. So uh, we were scrambling a little bit. He's gone old school, a Tascadero, uh, running down the gut, running down split backs, oh, uh, yes. veer option. Uh, and so it's uh, it's a little different because most people have gone spread and shotgun. So it was a little different trying to get the kids to run under center stuff for us this week. It's like playing Templeton uh, mm -hmm. in the sense that, you know, you don't see those styles of, of offense as much. So trying to mimic that uh, was our biggest challenge this week. Um, I mean, we're looking for a good old fashioned physical game this week, even though we're uh, a shotgun style team. We still like to run the ball. We're going to be physical. Uh, they're going to be physical. 
Um, and, you know, just looking for, you know, just a good old fashioned physical football game tonight. And, it, and it's funny, we're, we're we, I mean, I, I talk about this all the time, you know, I travel around, go to the different games, you know, just because my boys coaches over there in Templeton, and you see, the, you know, the crowds, you go to the, you know, like, we usually, as, as I assume that you guys as well, when you guys go and travel, you guys have more fans in the visitor's side than the home team has on their side. So I'm expecting, are you, and I'm sure you're expecting a massive crowd tonight. I, I hope so. Uh, you know, I, I think so. Over, over the last couple of years with the success we've had, we've had more people come out. Kids on campus are excited uh, to come out and watch the games again. And, and it's just been, it's been good. I mean, if anything, uh, is a kind of predictor uh, when we had a, that midnight madness practice. Where That's we, such a great tradition. Yeah, it was. I mean, we had probably a couple hundred people in the stands, Jeez. which was awesome. Midnight. Two, it, yeah, mid, midnight to two o'clock in the morning yeah, or something. Yeah, and people were out. There was a bunch of high school students. There were parents. There were family members, and they were in the stands, and they were watching. It was just, it was awesome. So if that's any indication of what, how many people are going to be out tonight, it's going it's to be a packed house. Last thoughts, coach? My thoughts, hey, we're just looking for a good game, super excited. I uh, hope everybody on both sides stay healthy. Looking forward to tonight. And uh, so Tascadero is implementing the cash, cashless system entries. Yes. Like, no cash at the gate. No cash at the gate. This has been, we're the last goal to do it. Um, so we're, we're going to the whatever site that is. Yeah, go, go fan. fan. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, so. And I'm sure there's gonna be people there at the gate helping you out because I know it's a frustration especially with the older generation you know that are just like getting acclimated to like a cell phone and mm -hmm. Facebook you know um, so there will be somebody there you know helping for sure I, I yeah there's gonna be people there you know showing them how to do the app and having the QR code so to try to make it as easy as possible awesome well coach hey Good luck tonight, for sure. and uh, hopefully a successful season, and uh, can't wait to have these conversations each week as you guys continue your track back down the championship uh, pathway. Looking forward to it. For so sure. There you have it, guys. Make sure you guys get out here and support your guys' local football team. Tascadero kickoff at 7 o'clock. Okay, these guys have some awesome tri-tip. They have the barbecue going, so you guys can get fed and watch an awesome football game. And as the Tascadero Greyhounds start back down their path to the championship We'll see you there.